Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Vibe Nation, and today we're here to watch another video. Today we are here to watch The Worm. This is a video that I've just come across. It's by Don't Walk Home Alone After Dark. And well, let's go ahead and see where this goes. If you want to watch the original video, the link in the description down below. Let's go in three, two, one, and play. Ah uh, yes, the rare ones. Can I tell you how much I would I love seeing girls work on cars that know what they're doing? I mean like it's a it's a rare find. Like every time I, I find out that oh you're a diesel tech, whoa, that's cool. I know you guys are out there, you're just like finding a rare Pokemon. I don't know about you, but by the second light, I would have been out, out of and down and out. I would have never stuck around for as long as she did. Sparrow Moon was not at all what I thought she would be. I wasn't given much time to go over her case file before our first appointment. But from what I had read, I half expected some kind of uncontrollable monster to walk through the door. She wasn't anything like that. She was quiet and guarded, smaller in person than what I had imagined from her photograph. A perfectly normal 17-year-old girl. That made it even harder to believe she was capable of doing the things that she did. She was the last surviving member of the so-called Woodfield Five, a group of kids all from the same remote northern town who suffered a series of unexplained, at times violent, mental breaks. Clinical notes suggested some kind of shared psychosis though unlike anything I'd ever heard of in my 20-year practice. By all accounts, Sparrow had an unremarkable childhood. No indications of behavioral difficulty, good grades in school, active social life, no family history of mental illness to speak of. Her mother had been part of some offbeat spiritual commune years earlier, but had left that behind when Sparrow was quite young and eventually remarried. There was nothing to suggest any kind of underlying trauma or abuse, though as you come to find in my line of work, that's not always so obvious. 
The only path to understanding what really happened in Woodfield was Sparrow herself. And that would prove more difficult than anyone anticipated. Can I take a moment to say this I am enjoying a lot more than I thought I would. Usually whenever I get to like a animated horror story, it'll be kind of like something like Llama Arts or something of that effect where there's a narration and there's the animation going on. But this, it's a little bit more based off of what we've seen so far in the past four minutes. I love the animation style. It gives me like a Cartoon Network type vibe with it. I like it. <clears throat> Definitely would be a really good Cartoon Network show if this with this type of um, animation style, honestly. But let's continue. I learned very little over the first weeks of our sessions together. Sparrow was often uncooperative careful never to allow the growing familiarity between us to weaken her resolve again like i said like the art style is somewhat like i, I feel like i've seen it on a cartoon network show but i'm not really too sure what it is i haven't i i don't have cable so i don't necessarily can watch cartoon network shows like i used to it's been years so but like it want to reminds me of Steven Universe, but not Steven Universe. And, and for some reason, I've seen clips of Infinity Train. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just gives me that vibe. I was not as strong. I became unreasonably attached to her. The endless medical diagnostics revealed nothing we didn't already know. She barely slept. The scratches on her arms were self-inflicted. And aside from high blood pressure, she was physically healthy. No one was certain about what exactly was wrong with her. And she was getting worse. The weeks turned to months and I was running out of time. The courts had determined that unless I could demonstrate conclusive progress in her treatment, Sparrow would be transferred to an isolated psychiatric ward and out of my care. I could have walked away at that point. I probably should have. But what I wanted, what I've always wanted, was answers. After all that we'd been through, she wasn't a kid to me anymore. She wasn't a monster either. She was a puzzle to solve. Sodium pentothal can be administered to induce something called narcosynthesis, a state between asleep and awake where the subject is highly suggestible. In most places today, the practice is frowned upon. Normally, I would never consider such a treatment, but given the circumstances, my options were limited. I knew full well that this could risk professional censure, perhaps even my career itself. That didn't seem to matter at the time. After the injection, Sparrow was brought to my office. We were left alone and I asked her to count backwards from ten. Though before she even got to five, it was clear she knew something was wrong. Her breathing became shallow, and her eyes darted around rapidly. She began talking about a mist coming into the room that only she could see. She could hear a voice from within it calling to her. The drug had disoriented her to such a degree that I don't even think she recognized me. Sparrow's small size and chronic fatigue made the dosage I administered tricky. She drifted in and out for several minutes. When lucid, I redirected her. 
asking if she could tell me what the voice she heard was saying. After a long pause, she finally whispered, Little bird. At that point, Sparrow was not interested in answering any of my questions. She just spoke, and I listened. She said that it knew. It knew that was what he used to call her. The old man. But the voice wasn't a man's. It was something else. She said it comes with the mist. That it takes things from you and it grows. Adding to what it's taken from others. It eats you from the inside. She didn't know its name, but called it the worm. As Sparrow lapsed into unconsciousness, I was left with more questions than answers. I arranged to have her return to her room and resign myself to the idea that I might never get the chance to understand the truth. That I had failed. I destroyed the records of our last session to prevent the review board from finding out what I had done. It was over. Or at least, that's what I thought. Mm. It was that night the dream started. Wow, bro. But can you imagine? Just we were asleep and then now you just wake up and you feel and you're just like hospital bed, light door that just sprung up out of nowhere. Definitely a dream. But like, yo. Hmm. It's gotta be some type of entity of some sort. Be able to jump from people's uh mental uh, psyche. From dream to dream. Hmm. Like, this is really well animated. I I love it. <clears throat> I really like this. Wait. Some stand. Every time I go to sleep, it's the same. It doesn't really matter how the dream begins. Eventually, the mist will come. 
And with the mist always comes the worm. Just like she said it would. You can't run. That never works. It won't let you. The best you can hope for is that you wake up quick. Before it begins to feed. At first, I told myself that it would go away. It could be a simple anxiety-induced aberration brought on by the stress of dealing with the case. But it was soon obvious that wasn't it. The nightmares didn't stop. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. It wasn't long before my colleagues began to take notice. Things got so bad I had no other choice. I called in every favor, pulled every string I could, and arranged access to Sparrow at her current facility. I needed answers more than ever. And she still had them. Hmm. I almost didn't recognize her at first. She looked strong and alert. A stark contrast to the tired girl that I had spent all that time with. I didn't have to ask any questions this time. Just by looking at me, she knew all too well what was happening. We sat down, and Sparrow Moon gave me what I needed. The worm is some kind of parasite. A pathogen, an ancient thing passed from host to host, manifesting in their dreams, feeding on their deepest fears. It will not stop. Always hungry for more. It won't kill you. It doesn't want you dead. It wants what any good virus wants. To propagate. To be passed on. To be fed. Sparrow tried to hold it inside of her. To protect others. She thought that if she could fight it long enough, it would die with her. She passed the worm to me the same way that it had been passed to her. Just by telling me about it. You have to believe me. I am sorry for this. Now that I've told you, I don't know when. But sooner or later in your dreams, the mist will come. And with the mist, always comes the worm. Well, all I can say is this. Um, don't walk home after, no home alone after dark. You, sir, have a subscriber. Because this was very well animated. I like the storytelling, the, narr er, the narration, and the voice acting. To be honest with you, the voice acting caught me a little bit off guard. I didn't think it was going to be like one of those, where it actually had voice actors voicing the characters. So that was a nice plus. The story of like, you know, this thing gets passed on to people if they tell you about it is interesting. Any, but guys, tell me what you think about this. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What are your thoughts? Is there a folklore in um, connection with the the worm that will that that the um, creator took um, inspiration from? Please tell me in the comments. Let's start a conversation about it. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been Vibe Nation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the creator of this video. Uh, don't walk home alone after dark and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Peace.